It's just like I love to talk and I have, have a chance of people watching me talking, so why shouldn't I? All right, hi, so today we're gonna be making empanadas one more time, but this time I'm gonna show you how to make a homemade dough that you can fry. All right, step one, uh, you're gonna mix all the liquids in a bowl large enough to hold all the dough together. So I'm gonna start with the water and then I'm gonna add the butter that is already melted. So if you don't have any butter and you wanna make this vegan friendly, you can definitely use the same amount of olive oil. Okay, so then I'm gonna add the salt all together and it's measured and then the vinegar. I love apple cider vinegar. I think it's um, the best vinegar. I use it for my salads, I use it for everything. Mix it a little bit. And then I'm gonna start adding the flour gradually, um, maybe with another spoon or with your hands. Some recipes call for mixing the flour with your dry ingredients first. In this case, it will be the salt. And then adding the water Gradually, um, that works too. I like this method better. I feel, I feel like you have a little bit more of control. It's gonna look weird in the beginning, but just bear with me. The reason why I'm adding the flour in a small additions is because you don't wanna have a big lump of flour stuck in the middle. This will allow you to break all the clumps in the flour. And that's why actually, um, number one reason why I sift the flour is because you know, you might have the flour in a container, sitting at home for a while, and sometimes you get like big chunks, dry chunks in there. So sifting it will prevent any of those pieces getting in here. It's getting smooth already, you can see it. We kind of like start working the gluten, we wanna work the gluten, but not too much to prevent it from being like hard. All right, so it's getting there. So I'm gonna add the rest of the flour. All right, number one reason why I developed this recipe is because I wanted to um, be nice with everybody who asked for it. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna be making every single thing. Oh, I just mix this with a wooden spoon, but you can actually and totally invite your children in the mixture here and do this by hand. Number one reason why people don't make the empanada dough at home in Argentina, I think, it's because you do make a big mess and you have to have like, you know, enough space in your counter and be ready to have like a cleanup after. We need to knead it for like about um, two minutes, I think the recipe calls. And if you feel like it's getting a little wet, just put a little more flour. Ah! All right, cut. <laughs> so what you wanna do is like push and get back. Yeah, this is a freaking workout. And it can be made up like two days ahead of time. I made it and I had it in my fridge for like three days and it was fine. Who's my lucky charm? Oh, my lucky charm. Hello, Gabriella. Oh, look, you never learned this. Oh my God, that panda bear shirt is the too what? cute. Your shirt. Oh, the bear? It's too cute. Uh, what I'm an expert at. Empanada dough? Yes. Really? And we're gonna fry them. Oh, you do fried ones. Yes, are you gonna be around here for a little longer? You bet, you make okay. it fried empanadas. And it's a really special... What's the filling? Ham, cheese, and onions. Ham, cheese, and onions. Oh, yes. me yeah. It's been two minutes? Oh, wow, wow, touch it, nice. Yeah, quit yapping. Look. What's the touch? It has to be really soft to the touch. I like to keep it like this, like a little rectangle, but not so little, it's heavy though. So, to the fridge. All right, so thanks to the magic of um, the test kitchen, we already have a dough that has been chilling. Chilling. <laughs> so I have another sheet pan with a parchment paper. The reason why is because this dough has to be really cold when you're working it. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, and then in the middle. One. This guy is gonna be smaller, so I'm gonna make it a little skinnier. So nice, look at that. And I know the recipe says it makes 40, and I'm cutting it into six, and I'm asking you to make six rounds. So six times six is not 40. All right, so uh, while you're working with one piece, you want the rest of your um, dough to be covered with some plastic to avoid any dryness. 
And the other thing I want to recommend when you do this recipe is to make sure you have room in your refrigerator. So before you start, before you even buy your ingredients, make sure you have some sort of room in your fridge on a shelf that is not uneven to put this uh, sheet pan in and out because you're going to be working in and out a bunch of times. All right, good. I'm going to start rolling. Rolling pins. For this recipe, you're going to need a rolling pin. Preference on rolling pins. I know this is the most popular and the one that most people will go and buy. The one I like to use, and that's because I, I am old <laughs> and I have old hands, and it really hurts my hands to make uh, the pressure here. If you see, you're using this part. So I figure that with this, you just hold it and the pin does the work for you. I mean, you still have to make pressure and work your arms a little bit. So you start with one of the pieces. You are aiming to have a rectangle of about 14 inches long and 10 inches wide. And like I said, this is really resilient, so don't be afraid, like I am sometimes, to put a little pressure because it's dull. If it doesn't work, you can roll it back again and start all over. Not even the ice. It's still really cold. And that's very important to work with your dough when it's like still cold. Uh, when you are frying dough, um, when you're frying anything, it's kind of like kind of like common sense that you shouldn't introduce anything that has um, any type of liquid like water inside the hot oil because that's gonna create what I call um, explosions. Um, it's gonna start like bubbly and it's gonna splatter you and you might end up with oil in your face. So when you have a, something that has filling inside and part of it is liquid, because if you think about it, cheese, it's milk, and milk is a type of liquid, um, you have to be very, very um, attentive to the way you seal in it. The recipe calls for a four and a half inch round cutter. This is almost four and a half. As soon as you cut them, you wanna keep um, the dough chilled. So I'm gonna put them straight on a sheet pan. That's where we're gonna be doing the filling too. If you have a smaller cutter, you can make smaller rounds that will you know, end up being smaller empanadas. So you will have to put less amount of filling and you will have to fry a lot longer. But sometimes it's kind of cute to have like little tiny empanadas pass around as hors d'oeuvres. So I'm gonna put this back in the fridge. That's why I was saying you need to have a space in your refrigerator. And this extra dough, don't get rid of it. Save it. I don't wanna like work it a lot. It's just like cover it with a little bit of um, plastic and you can roll it again later and have some more empanadas. Yeah. So for this empanada dough, uh, you can use any kind of filling that you like. You know, you can make it any way you want. You can even make the, the dough is, um, it doesn't have a lot of uh, salt in it, so you can use it also for like sweet empanadas with a little bit of guava. Oh, that's something that I should try. I have two onions that have been diced, a small dice, and cooked for like about five minutes until they get a little bit of color. and season with salt and pepper and a little bit of oregano. So then I got some mozzarella cheese. The type of mozzarella cheese I got, it's the low moisture one, but you can use any other mozzarella, but not um, fresh, because the fresh mozzarella basically will melt faster and it will turn your filling into like a very watery filling. So I'm gonna cut it in cubes of about half an inch. When I teach classes for children, I. This is one of the first things I show them because even though these amazing cutting boards from OXO had these little tiny legs that are supposed to be anti-sliding, they don't move. It's always a good like rule of thumb to put a wet paper towel on it so it won't slide anymore. All right, cheese. Um, in order to prevent the cheese from melting excessively to the point that it turns into water, I recommend using a little bit of uh, cornstarch or flour. All right, so you wanna coat it nicely with um, cornstarch. I'm gonna add a little more. Ham. 
So this is a um, cooked ham. I like to use this kind of like cheaper version of ham. Wait, I mean, if you want to use prosciutto and you know, you can afford it and you want to use prosciutto inside your empanada, by all means, do whatever you want. It's your empanada. And you want to cut it in like, sort of like a square or long, rectangular pieces now, and then go again, kind of roughly chopping it. So what I'm going to do now is mix the ham with the onions. While you're doing this, you, I mean, if you're going to um, grill your empanadas and fry them the same day, you should start heating up your oil. Luckily here, I have Roda to help me for everything. All right, there. Nicey, nicey. All right, yeah. So the reason why I'm putting onion on the ham and cheese empanada, it's because I wanted to make um, an end flavor that is gonna be pretty similar to um, a type of pizza we have in Buenos Aires that is called fugaceta. Fugaceta is cheese and cooked onions with a little bit of um, oregano. And when you combine onions with oregano, I don't know exactly what the chemical reaction is, but that smell or flavor combined with a nice piece of melted mozzarella reminds me so much of that pizza. Um, so that's what I'm trying to bring up here. To build them up, you have the rounds that I, we just cut. I chill them for a few minutes. The colder they are, I wish you can touch them because they're still pretty cold. The colder, the colder they are, the more um, malleable. So it calls for one tablespoon. And because we work in the test kitchen, we are obsessed with measuring things, timing things, and writing exact things. But, you know, like if you see that the amount that you put in, it's excessive for the size of your round, just put a little less. Because remember, you're gonna have to fold this in two and seal them. Also something I noticed when I was developing the recipe is that it tends to shrink. The dough tends to shrink a little bit. So you're gonna need water in a little bowl. And I, when you work um, sealing the empanadas, it's a, another good rule of thumb or idea that I have is like to have a, a towel handy because your, your fingers are gonna get wet. And after you put half of the water around, you wanna kind of like dry them a little bit to keep continuing. So I'm missing the cheese. I'm gonna do the cheese. So it calls for one piece of cheese. The reason why I'm crumbling it with my hands is to allow for the empanada to have a better shape. When you close it, using your fingers, you're gonna wait halfway around of the disc, or round, and you're gonna grab the dry side and fold it over. And using your fingers, you're gonna seal. So I'm sealing this, and before I do the crimping or repulgue, I'm gonna put them back in the fridge, and I wanna show you why. You see how these guys kind of like getting limpy and oh, droopy? and yeah, droopy. I want them to be cold when I'm working on them. Oh, that's the reason why I'm drying. The reason why I'm drying my fingers, because when you do this, you don't want to have wet hands. All right, I'm gonna put them in the fridge for like a few minutes, and then do the crimping the way I know it. Thank you. So, repulgue or crimping, and the goal here is to have the empanada really seal. You can totally use a fork. So you start on the top. There are different ways of sealing them or doing repulgue. Ta-da! Kind of like a tiny empanada. Nuchas, hi Ariel. Ariel Barbut is the owner of Nuchas Empanadas. There are a few places uh, in the city. And I actually worked for him many, many years ago developing some flavors. So while you're doing this, make sure your oil is um, on medium to high heat. And if you have a thermometer, use it. Um, I recommend using a deep fried thermometer because you need to keep the temperature at a steady 350. And you're gonna have to constantly adjust the temperature um, in each batch uh, to keep it always at the same level. Every time you introduce an empanada in the oil, the oil temperature is gonna go down and it's gonna get colder. So for the next batch, when you take them out, just make sure that it's always at the same level. So I'm finished crimping them or making the repulgue. Um, so ideally you need to uh, chill this for like another 20 minutes. They are a little moist. 
I'm gonna just put a little bit of flour on it, just to absorb that extra moisture they might have. So your oil is at 350, you need a thermometer like I said before. So you will have another sheet tray with a cooling rack set into, and a bunch of these. I'm only gonna use one. So our oil is ready. I'm using vegetable oil. Olive oil doesn't have the same smoking point, so ideally you use canola, vegetable. So here we go, one. You don't wanna overcrowd. So you're gonna cook it for about, I think it's about five minutes. You gotta turn them around often. These are getting nice and fluffy. Right, these are hot, so don't touch them. You see the empanadas right now are getting really soft because it's hot in here. So if you feel like they're soft, just chill them back again. Freezer or the refrigerator? No, refrigerator. Freezer will add more moisture, okay. and we don't want that. Don't leave the kitchen. Be near the refrigerator and the stove because we're still frying. All right, my work is done. But they're hot. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just like, give it a couple minutes before you eat them. Are you hungry? Oh, looking nice, Cappy. I know. I know, right? Chill these, too. Wait, we've already got it. I think it's about oh, Wait, right. I gotta take... Come on now. All right. Take me a good one. Guys, please. This is out here touching... I don't want to be touching your food. Yeah, Brad is like, let me touch it, touch it, touch it. Oh, get over it. Hansi, I got it. thank you. You guys are all Daddy. hungry. I'm so happy right now. Like, I don't wish it, but like, you want to be like hungover when you eat these. Mm. Yeah, I could eat a ton of these. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can arrange that. <laughs> can I have another one? It's delish. I like that it's all on the outside, and then when you bite it, sandwiches together. So good, Gabby. It's not too oily, it's not too greasy, it's like just right, you know? Good. Honestly, I love it. Me too. Yep. I'm, I'm super happy. And I hope mm. everybody goes home and makes this at home. Yeah. Bon, hey, uh, bon appetit. Wasn't that bad to fry? I have something for you, Gabby. Oh. I have something for you. So remember from the last empanades video, you had the spoon and fork earrings? Mm -hmm. My mother, who is Gabby's biggest fan, oh my oh my God. got her spoon earrings that she got. Oh my God, wait, I gotta wash my hands. So Hold on. Yeah. Oh, wait. your mom, my, mo my mother loves Gabby. Gabby gave my mother a nice sponge, which is a great gift. Oh, it goes a long way with mom. That's cool, right, yes. And then so so little mother, things that matter. My mother sent you oh these. Oh my God, these are the cutest right? thing. Oh, yeah, because you had the fork and spoon. Ah. The fork and the other emp in the, their empanadas video. She had oh, the... full circle, Gabby, uh -huh. see? Thank you so much. Put it out there, it comes back, Gabby. Well, this hug is for your mom. Uh, I'll give it to her. Thank you, thank, thank you. Gabby. Oh, my God, I can't wait to wear them. <laughs> they are amazing. Home run, Gabby. Thank you so much.